Hi everyone, it's Alan Thornton here, President and CEO of St. John's Community Services. And I'm thrilled today because I've got a former uh, board member and a very good friend, David Bennett, joining us. And so David, thank you for coming on Champions in the Crisis. I really appreciate you carving out the time. I know you are a super busy guy. Um, give us a little idea of what you are doing right now. Uh, what, what role do you play in the community? And uh, just kind of what, what is keeping you going? Hey, Alan. Thanks for having me on. This is uh, such a great series, and I'm, I'm honored that you would find the time to include me in it. You're right, I had the chance to be on the St. John's board for, uh, I never remember, 16 or 18 years or something like that. I had the pleasure of serving as vice chair and leading the strategic planning task force, and probably my greatest accomplishment uh, was I led the, the CEO recruitment search that brought you into the St. John's family. Uh, as my day job, I serve as Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations of B. Howard University, America's, I would argue, premier historically black college here based in Washington, D.C. Uh, we are, like so many other institutions, at the center of the COVID crisis. Howard University Hospital is a leading healthcare provider in this city. We've been asked by the mayor to expand our hospital by 125%. That is more than double in order to prepare for what may be coming down the road. We also have at our core uh, serving communities that are traditionally underserved, particularly for us Black and African American neighbors. So we have opened at our own expense the first testing center for coronavirus east of the river in Washington, DC, uh, serving uh, to, to really reach out to communities of color and investigate what they're doing. We also, like a lot of institutions, went off campus in the course of about six days. We pivoted from 99% online instruction to, sorry, 99% in-person instruction to 100% online instruction in less than a week. Uh, and had a virtual commencement last week where we sent about 1,300 students armored with Howard diplomas out into kind of an uncertain world. So it, it is busy times, but it's, it's great to be able to do something that that, that contributes in a little way to people who are making a big difference. Yeah, that, everything you just described is just so significant. Um, the testing alone, you know, and, and the speed at which you must have had to pivot as an organization, you know, you're managing probably the emotions and challenges of your students that are, you know, are, are studying very hard and having to change and adapt very quickly uh, to online to bringing medical resources to bear in underserved communities. It's just really quite remarkable. Um, what, you know, what have you learned through this process? Like what are some of your kind of, as you've had a chance, maybe at night laying in bed to just reflect a little bit um, in the midst of the chaos and just all that's going on, are there some key takeaways or principles or things that you've learned through this? Well, I think that's a great question. And I think one thing is um, over communicate, over communicate, over communicate. And, and, and think of your stakeholders as a broader group than they are. So much like this conversation that we're having today in this series that you launched, it's not just about our consumers. It's not just about their families and direct support professionals and our operations staff, but it's about other people who are trying to understand what our community looks like in time of crisis and how they can help and how they can be engaged. So I think the first is, is really to over communicate. The second is I have had to learn as a manager and as employee, a level of patience I didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm doing a video conference with my head of advancement services and his wife's on another video conference and the baby starts to cry, baby going to come in a camera. And it just as the measure of patience that that's something that would have been professionally unacceptable 69 days ago. And now is something that we, we have to create the, the time and space. And the third that I'm really focusing on is what I'm calling the air in the balloon. And we have all been, the balloon has is, is, is been full all the way and on the edge of popping for nine or 10 weeks. And I say that not as a parent with little kids at home. I'm trying to homeschool on the side. I say that with someone who's been able to keep his job and not face unemployment. So I know I come from a place of privilege when I say that, but we've been so focused on everything that has to be done now, now, now. 
that the urgent and the important are the same list now. And so for me, it's really trying to think not only for my staff, but, but me personally and me professionally, how do I let some air out of that balloon and realize that I think we're gonna be living in this modality for an extended period of time, mm -hmm. but also reinflate it a little bit with future looking, with planning, with how do we do this for months or a year? How, how, what are the needs of my staff gonna change? How are the needs of our students gonna change? So it's, it's making sure the balloon doesn't explode, but not letting so much air out that I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I would think those are the three things that I've, that feel different for me right now. Yeah, those are um, all very good points and I, I echo them and especially over communicating. I know we've been trying to do more of that externally and internally to try to stay connected um, and, and build further engagement with our stakeholders to let them know um, the people that we're supporting are some of the highest risk individuals and, right. and they are uh, some of the most vulnerable in our communities. And you know, now's the time that we need people's help to make sure that they can stay safe and healthy um, to the best of our ability. You know, you mentioned something earlier, and I thank you for uh, your really kind words um, about bringing me to St. John's. That was, um, you know, it just, it felt meant to be the way that through the course of conversations and interviews with the board, that it was a good fit uh, all the way around. And um, one of the things that I've been reflecting on is the importance of leadership in the right positions at the right time. Um, as we were going through this process. And I, and I go back, the role that you've played at St. John's over the years um, as a board member and then at, in, in certain key roles at key times in order to further the organization's mission. You know, I, I think, um, you know, I have a lot to be grateful for to you and so does the organization because of those kind of pivot points, really critical times that you were in the right role at the right time to be able to step up to the plate. Um, what brought you to St. John's in the first place? I mean, you mentioned you, you've been engaged somehow 16, 17 years. Do you remember kind of what event or series of events led for you to come to St. John's? Yep, I went to the first art view at Nick and Sandy Dury's house. Uh, we used to have a fundraiser uh, that was um, uh, an art show, an art exhibit, and it started in the home of the then chairman of the board, who was my client at National Geographic. Ironically, 15 years later, I went on the staff of National Geographic, uh, but, but Nick invited me because he knew that I had spent time working on issues involving people with disabilities. Uh, I don't yet have anyone in my family that has an uh, intellectual or physical disability, but it's just been an issue that I've been involved in since I was very young. Uh, actually, the, ironically, two of the pieces of art on the wall behind me uh, I bought at Artview that first year. Uh, Nick's daughter made them. Wow. And, uh, and it was a chance to, to get involved. And Nick asked me to join the board. And uh, I met with our long-serving CEO and COO at the time and thought maybe I could make a difference. And it was the a, a beginning of a great ride. And, and again, as I think you know, just because I'm not on the board doesn't mean that I'm not as committed to St. John's and the St. John's family and, and what our mission is. So that's literally, it was Nick Dury's house and Chevy Chase. That's incredible. That's, that's tremendous. And yeah, uh, David, you, you do and have stayed very engaged uh, for as busy as you are. Um, since rolling off the board, you know, I get regular texts from you. I get an email. You'll check in. You've been uh, financially supportive. Um, you're, you're staying connected. And I have to believe it's because of um, your belief in our mission and the people that we're supporting and also just the investment that you've made personally, you know, with time and and other resources uh, to bring to bear to help us advance our mission. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, what you know stands out in your mind um, as you think about the people that we support, and you you know our services really well. Um, and we were chatting briefly uh, before we went live here just about some of the challenges we've been facing with uh, COVID. Kind of you know if you were to peel back the onion for someone that might not know us as well. What are some of the things that you would want them to know either about the people that we support or our programs or our teams out in the field kind of making this all happen? So it, I didn't come to St. John's because of the mission. 
I mm. came to St. John's because of how it delivers on the mission. There are a mm. lot of organizations that support people with intellectual and physical disabilities and people who are experiencing homelessness. And there are a lot of people that do it with good intentions and good hearts. I've never seen an organization that delivers more effectively, more independence and more safety to the consumers and families we're able to serve than I have St. John's. And I just don't say that because I've been to so many of the programs and I've met so many of our consumers and our families, but I say it because every outside accreditor that comes in and looks at our programs gives us the highest mark. We don't pass, we get straight A's. And what that means is we're taking better service to the people we're honored to serve and it means that we're providing better servants to do that. I mean, our direct care workers, our direct support professionals are, are hands down the best in the business. And they come from a position of affection and love. I think the other thing I wanna point out is what COVID is revealing in my day job in communities of color in the black and African-American communities. And in your day job of people with intellectual disabilities who need support, we are, we are simply seeing on a larger scale the health inequities and disparities that existed long before COVID came along. And this is an opportunity for us to say, are we as a society really going to commit to longer term solutions to addressing those cares? Because we know for people with disabilities, just like Black and African Americans, there are health disparities, there are economic disparities, and there are disparities in social inclusion. And St. John's has been a driver for the people that we're honored to serve in each of those three spaces. We have been advocates for a system as well as supporters of individuals. And, and I, I just think that's the kind of thing that, that makes St. John's different. And I look at the number of families that have trusted us to take care of their loved ones for decades and know that we can do it well. And that is the kind of, of endorsement and, and support. I also know because it was always a struggle, we run the leanest headquarters ship in the business. Uh, we don't have a big home office. We don't have a whole bunch of people because those are dollars that get taken away from providing services and support or the fact that we managed to pay our direct support professionals a little more than the market average. They still don't get paid anywhere where they need to be paid, uh, but we wanna make sure that our dollars are staying in our day programs, in residences that people choose, and with our direct support professionals. St. John's is simply, it is better at what it does than any other organization I've ever been a part of, and I've worked in disabilities issues for 30 years. No, thank you for all of that. And those are, uh, that's very high praise. And, you know, I point directly to the people on the front line that you're referring to our direct support professionals and their managers day in, day out, many of whom right now, particularly in DC, as well as Virginia, are sheltering in place with very vulnerable individuals. And they've been doing that for about a month, over a month now, and they volunteered to do that. And so if you think about the selflessness that that entails, that they're you know, leaving their loved ones and that they're potentially putting themselves in harm's way in order to make sure that the people that they're supporting with intellectual developmental disabilities um, have the best care that they need and the lowest risk of transmission. Yeah, uh, I, 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 wanna re I wanna restate that. These are people who are leaving their own families. These are people who often are medically at risk themselves if they contract COVID and they're leaving their own families and moving in with their St. John's family to take care of the people they've committed to. That is an act of selflessness and generosity and love, and it can't be read any other way. And that's why you know, they really are, like my nurses and physicians and hospitalists at Howard University Hospital, they just, they're a different stripe, and that they're not getting the recognition they deserve for literally being willing to sacrifice themselves to take care of people. It's, it's remarkable, but it's been St. John's DNA for a century and a half. That just is what the organization is. You're absolutely right. And they've always pivoted. St. John's has always pivoted to the needs of the community and those that are vulnerable in it. 
And that was one of the things that really drew me to St. John's two and a half years ago through the process was learning through the board and learning through my research about these people that are very innovative in how they approach service delivery. But really at the bottom of it, it, it it's centered in love for humanity and, and wanting to make a difference in someone's life, particularly those that are vulnerable. And coming to St. John's and being immersed more in that and being exposed to the, the team at, at large and then seeing them pivot in the midst of this pandemic and, and really took a whole other step. It just demonstrates what you're saying, the DNA of the organization. And it's really amazing. They're, the people that are doing this, the team members are doing this, are nothing short of uh, heroes you know, for their work. And, and with that in mind, as you know, we kicked off a month long campaign um, back on Giving Tuesday now. And we are trying to raise $75,000. Um, and those dollars are going to support those frontline workers to make sure that we're providing them with the PPE essentials that they need to stay safe and to keep those that they're supporting safe. It's also going to support um, the people that we support with technology so that they can remain connected to their healthcare providers as well as their loved ones and family members. Um, and so, you know, I say this to you because you've been a long-term supporter of the organization. Um, if you were to, you know, ask or encourage people to consider making that gift, knowing that that gift is matched two to one. So essentially that $5 turns into 15, 50 turns into 150, you know, $100 turns into $300. You know, I, I know that this is kind of the space that you work in, but I know that this is personal to you as well and comes from a personal place. What would you say to encourage someone to consider making a gift during this campaign that goes until June 5th? So first of all, you're right. I, I wanna thank the Founders Board of St. John's Church and the, the women who are the energy behind that because the first thing is your dollar is getting multiplied by two. So your, your ROI is gonna be higher than imagined. The second is when we talk about the services and I maybe could be a little more blunt than the CEO can, St. John's is taking a huge financial hit because of COVID, because a lot of the programs that we would normally deliver, like going out in the community and our day programs, we can't deliver. And we are paid as an organization for services that we deliver. So on one hand, we have people who are moving into homes and spending 24 seven with people that they care for and care about and love. And we're also seeing dramatic decreases in dollars that we're getting from the state and federal governments. So there's an equity issue here that I think it's not only your dollar goes further, but your dollar is more urgently needed than now. I made my contribution in a time of financial uncertainty for all of us because I know the, the business well enough to know both the extraordinary generosity of our staff, including our staff who have personally been faced with cases of COVID, and I know the precariousness of the financial circumstance. So this is, this is a, a thoughtful campaign. I just want to add some urgency to it because this is the kind of thing that we, that I know St. John's and I know the current board and I know the leadership. We will do whatever it takes as long as we can to keep our people safe, independent, and fully engaged. But we can't do that alone for long. That's why not only will your support get a higher ROI, but there has never been a more urgent time to go to sjcs.org and make a contribution to reply to the direct mail uh, that you get, to reply to the email that you get. These people are doing the most important work in the world and they are honored to be invited to do that with family members and consumers, but, but we need to give them some backing as they do. No, I appreciate that. You're right. I mean, this is needed now more than ever, because as you know, the government is slow to respond at times. And in the midst of this crisis, that's been more challenging for them, for different states to respond with funding models to make up for lost revenue. And we're still providing services for individuals throughout this entire time. Meanwhile, our overtime has gone up. The costs for PPE have gone up, you know, all of those things are necessary. And we have a moral and um, a commitment to the people that we support to keep them safe. And so um, I do ask and echo what David's saying. If you are listening and watching now, please go on to www.sjcs.org forward slash donate. 
Make your gift today because you know that it truly will impact the lives of the most vulnerable citizens in our community during this time. And with a two to one match, your gift goes out much further. We need it now more than ever. And I just thank you for your consideration. Um, David, I wanna thank you, um, but before I let you go, um, you know, we've talked about some very serious, heavy issues about COVID, the impact on services. How are you kind of letting down during this time? You, you've got to, find, we all have to find ways to let loose a little bit. Uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, kind of what are you doing to just uh, keep your sanity during this time, to deal with the pressure, to kind of let loose, to, to have some enjoyment throughout this time? So one thing that luckily before the pandemic started, I had made a commitment to try and lose a little bit of weight. Uh, so that's been, I've been taking, a, a, if I can, a 30 minute walk during the day and about a 45 minute walk at night. Uh, and so I'm obviously doing that in a safe, socially distanced way in my own neighborhood. Um, so I have seen every tree open and every tulip bloom and everything in my neighborhood has been a big part of it. I think the other is, is kind of listening to your body and particularly for a male we're not very good at doing that and if my boss is watching and i'll tell him this yesterday at 5 30 i just was done yesterday was a really hard day and i just i had to walk away and i went outside and i got a book to turn my brain onto like foolish fiction and i just i knew i i had to step away i realized about 10 days in i was waking up at two o'clock every morning and couldn't go back to sleep because my brain kicked in 100%. And I was feeling kind of growing anxiety. So I did a virtual visit with my doc and now take a Xanax every night, which I've never had to do before. I think part of it is getting outside. I'm very fortunate to have a partner that I love very much. And we do really well about 98% of the time during pandemic era, which I think is, is winning. But it's also just acknowledging you know, how you feel physically, how you feel emotionally, kind of where you are on that in responding to it. No, that, that's all good insights. Um, I, I think there was a lot of that going around yesterday because by around that same time, I was fried and needed to just get outside. I took our dogs out for a long walk and just to, just to find yourself and find some center because it is a very difficult, different time for all of us. We're under amazing pressure, um, you know, on a variety of different fronts. Um, professionally also care for our own loved ones and, and how they're doing in the midst of this. So I appreciate you being vulnerable and, and sharing that way. And again, I just want to thank you for how you've supported St. John's financially, how you've supported St. John's through the years, through your volunteer work. And I, it means the world to us. And again, I would ask for those that are watching, please consider making that gift. It's urgently needed now, as David was outlining so well. Um, go to www.sjcs.org forward slash donate and know that your gift will be matched two to one and it'll go even further to help those that are vulnerable in our community right now. So thank you, David, uh, for taking this time and stay well and stay healthy. Same. Best to my colleagues.